the Patrick Star show comes off unnecessary, as does the other spinoff, Camp Coral. I don't think this is a show that the original creator would have made if he were alive, as he has stated this. But I understand the legendary and iconic status that the SpongeBob IP holds. Any smart business, especially Nickelodeon, who is a company who hasn't had much success with new shows, would not stop their cash cow. You're not doing that. With that out of the way, I want to have this review be clear of that negative notion and just focus on what the show is and isn't. The first half of the Patrick Star show, it was difficult. Everything I had heard about it, it was, it was true. I felt such an underdeveloped and half-assed attempt at a spinoff. Patrick did not work as the main character, as he's just, he's just so dumb. That show's a hoot. The big guy is so dumb. And not in the charming and hilarious way that we've come to know. It felt like the best parts of the show had nothing to do with Patrick or this world that they created. As the cameos and the references felt like the only positives that he could point out or just overshadowed everything. The show's plot device of Patrick having his own show and doing random things like he's a streamer or YouTuber, I think it works, but it, it feels a little bit lazy and just a way to ensue ridiculous, boring and unrelated activities. A major issue was the weak supporting cast. The parents, Squidina, they didn't have any personality or add anything. And when the main character, which is Patrick, is already a glaring issue, it makes the rest just a drag or you just don't want to root for anything or anybody. They do try to make certain characters from Spongebob more present, like Slappy, Ruby, and a few others. But again, I just, I don't find them that useful or that interesting. There was one saving grace though, and that was the grandpa. He was the glue of the show and made for the most interesting and creative parts. Whether he was time traveling, having flashbacks um, with members of the show, or just going alongside Patrick's shenanigans, I felt he was by far the best and most unique character. The comedy had no direction or idea as most of the time, it felt like this ADHD experience where they constantly need to have something happening or just something being beat up. So their response was to just have randomness be its main attraction, which is in the first half, just so tiresome. It's not like this half didn't have any good moments or episodes like X marks the spot, but as I stated previously, it was never about Patrick or the universe that made those episodes good, but it was more the concept of the episode or the cameos. The first half was messy. It was unnecessarily random and had no idea what it was trying to be. It was everything I had anticipated, but it was worse to experience. I would rate this half around a three to a four out of 10. So after a rough start with hardly any redeeming qualities or episodes, I expected the same after the mid-season finale. To my surprise, this had me conflicted as the Patrick Star show was good. A few episodes after the mid-season finale, around episode 27, I don't know if something changed with the writing, the directors, the producers, but it definitely felt something had shifted. The writing, episode pacing was so much better. They embraced the craziness, but went in a more focused and contained approach. So things didn't feel directionless or as chaotic. The show finally had a wacky and strange comedy and animation style that felt kind of original, kind of fresh. This not only gave Patrick an identity, but the entire show and its supporting characters. This made the episodes and their ideas inventive. It gave Patrick some strong episodes where it finally gives him funny non-slapstick direction with an established presence. I know that's a bare minimum for shows, but nearly half of this show was lacking that. So for it to finally hit, was a good thing. Some episodes that reflect these newfound changes was Fitzpatrick, where it was an amazing lineage of Patrick's family and forms throughout SpongeBob. Super Sitters plays more of the reference card, but it is believable that it would happen only in the Patrick show. Home Eck, Back Pay Payback, and Bubble Bass Reviews gives the side characters fun adventures while also giving them time to be their own people and still utilizing Patrick and Squidina or whatever. Sure, Patrick isn't as nearly involved or the center, but it's pulled off more interestingly. Then the animation is so bizarre, but it's really clean. They even experiment with great cutaway gags, some rubber hose, 
and other fun ideas that add on to the new chaotic and newfound style that is just so charming. There are still some misses, obviously, but around the third act of the season is when they hit a good stride of writing and it actually kind of became a show. I would rate this a good 7.5 to 8. The Patrick Star Show is your typical greedy reboot series. It's messy with its comedy and plots, aimless in its characters and episodes, and does not offer anything new or quality in the Spongebob universe. It truly does deserve the hate that it did get for nearly 60% of its duration. But then the next 40% or so, it's fresh, it's honed in, and it does capture signs of life that is entertaining and has some semblance of good elements. It fixes some of those issues in the first half, in the tail end of the series, as whatever studio change they did was done with care, much like the later episodes from season 13 of Spongebob. I don't think I can recommend this to anyone or even the biggest Spongebob fan. I can't even confirm if I'll be watching season two, but this has sure been one of the most unique experiences I've had. The Patrick show shouldn't exist, but it's fun. <laughs>